Okay, hello everyone. How are you? It's K. So uh, this is the 26th of April 2022 and this is on Tuesday. So let's start the live stream today and uh, check together the charts and see what's happening right now. Okay, so it looks like markets are still active. So March was very active and um, April is also active. I mean, Forex pairs are active. So uh, yeah, let's see what's happening right now. So uh, yeah, so then um, let me switch the screen and start the live right now. Okay, so uh, as a quick disclaimer, as usual, uh, this content is basically uh, based on my own experience and knowledge. So when you take a trade, please do at your own risk. And also, since this is live, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines, that will be great. And recently, there are so many fake accounts of mine in social media. So if you see any of these, my name and Telegram, Instagram, Facebook, or direct messages, these are fake, so please be careful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start slowly today. So uh, I will first say hi to everyone until I see more members coming into this live stream and then start to see some Forex pairs first. So let's see. Thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you here. Slimon. I'm Hardika Oscar and too good to see you. And I see uh, Active, Ahimela also. Thank you for joining as well. Great to see you. And uh, Hawao, Monorom, and William, Sorosh, Austin, and Jorg, Michael, and Khalid, Asif, and Sorosh, TikTok, Ivan, and Chu, Mahesh. Thank you for joining as well. Great to see you. All right, Daniel and Arukadi. And uh, John On and Faiz also. Great to see you too. Thank you for joining. Okay, Soros says, uh, did you take any trade? It was a little spiky in the lower time frames. Uh, yeah, so I took the trade on Euro USD, but ended with a loss. I took the loss of uh, 15 pips. Sorry, 17 pips of loss. And right now I have no trace. So yeah, let's check together the charts and uh, see what's happening right now. So uh, this is, let me switch to trading view. And let me try to fit this to the page. Okay. All right, so uh, yeah, so um, right now JPY is very strong, especially today JPY has been very strong. So all the JPY pairs are going backwards, basically. So, in days like this, I don't really trade JPY because daily chart is too bullish. But today, it's just retracing backwards. So, JPY looks to be not a good pair to trade. So, I would rather focus on these more trending pairs. So, uh, yeah, so let's say, let's see which one is trending besides JPY today. I was seeing the pound USD, I think it was pound USD. Yeah, pound USD broke the support and yeah, it's still going down. So we can start with pound USD and talk about uh, the lower time frames and how I would enter the markets. So let's start from this one today. All right, I see people coming in still continuously. Thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you. All right, so... Uh, yeah, so pound USD, this is a daily time frame. After the breakout of the support, 1.2978, it has been going downwards. So, but Kumo is looking good. Whenever you see this in you know, three days straight downwards with I wave, you may think that this is oversold and you may think it will be traced backwards. However, if you look at the Kumo here, Kumo has a thickness to it. If this is not too thin, so I expect this downtrend could be continuous in the daily time frame. So I'm totally okay to look for the sell chance on this one. And then what I do is I look at the one hour, 
which I call is a mid time frame. So, okay, one hour chart shows the price is below Tenkan Kijun Sen and uh, Chikou Span below candles. Kumo is also bearish. So, this is bearish. But uh, it just said the Kijun Sen is flat. I mean, this uh, green one is called the Kijun Sen. Kijun Sen is now flat. And Senko Span B is also flat. And Senko Span A is down. But since Kijun Sen flat, uh, Senko Span B flat, it may be trace. So in this case, I wait for the breakout of the support in one hour. And we had also two previous uh, candles, a relatively smaller body and long wicks up and downwards. And these are not technically doji, but looks like it's doji. The market has been ranging for the last two hours. So I would prefer to wait for the breakout of the support in one hour, 1.266A level. And once it triggers, I come back and look for the sell chance. So that I would do that. So because uh, whenever I see these dojis on any time frames, once it breaks, it tends to go towards that direction very fast. But uh, it might be worse. If the market breaks the doji bullish this way, then it may reverse back to Kijun Sen. So uh, this is where I hold until I clearly see the market breaks the support. Pound USD looks good. Once it happens, we can come back and look, talk about the selling edge. So I will mark this one, Pound USD. So uh, yeah, and let's see if we can find any other interesting pairs. Um, yes, I will check gold also. Yeah, I will check the gold later, but let me first screen the forex pairs. So since pound looks to be bearish, let me uh, let me switch to the trading view uh, from trading view to a strings chart. So here is a strings chart. This is showing the currency strings as of now. And light blue is a JPY. JPY has been so strong. And this is against the major direction in the daily chart. So we see lower time frames, JPY pairs are uh, downtrending, but it might be tricky. So uh, I think in this case, I prefer to stay away from the JPY pairs. So besides JPY, um, currently CAD is very weak and Pound is also weak today and Euro is also relatively weaker. And the strong currency is USD. USD was strong, this uh, orange, USD was strong, but I can see Cisfran, AUD and New Zealand are retracing. So right now I see Pound USD was good and also USD CAD is also good. If USCCAD is bullish in the higher time frames, then uh, I'm happy to look for the buying edge. So in that sense, let me check the USCCAD. So let me switch back to trading view and USCCAD. Okay, and let me first talk about the daily time frame. So daily time frame USCCAD is flat in terms of Ichimoku. This is actually up in price action because it broke the resistance and now it's going up. So it may reach, back, reach up to here, 1.2900 level. But as per Ichimoku Kin Kohyo, we say that this is still range because Kumo is flat. Tenkan Span B has been flat. And Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen are up, but they are below the Kumo. So this is considered to be flat market in range. So technically definition of range in terms of Ichimoku and price structure are a bit different. So whenever I see range, most likely I say this based on Ichimoku definition. So because as for Ichimoku it's range, I say it may reverse backwards in a daily time frame basis. So I can't follow the daily direction because there is no direction in the daily time frame. So in this case, I look at the lower time frame, which is the four hour time frame. So I go down to the four hour chart 
and then I see this is bullish. Unlike the daily time frame, if you look at the 4 hour chart, you can see the Kumo, both single span BA are bullish. Kijun Sen is also bullish, and Tenkan Sen also bullish, and Chikou span above candles, so it's bullishness. It also broke the previous high in the 4 hour chart also. And then right now, this is bullish. And then I do cut the 1 hour time frame also. And if 1 hour is also bullish, then I will look at the 5 minute chart and talk about where exactly to enter the market. So I go down to the 1 hour. Okay, I can find that 1 hour is also bullish. Uh, because uh, Kumo is bullish itself, Kijun Sen angle is also bullish, and Chikou Span above candles. So this is bullish in terms of Ichimoku. So I can actually go down to the 5 minute and look for the entry edge. Yeah, so let me go down to the 5 minute chart. Usually I take the 5 minute for the entry. Or sometimes I take the 15, but uh, if I take the 15 minute time frame, um, the st stop loss is a bit wide sometimes. Recently, whenever I see the 15 minute, it, it's so volatile, and my stop losses are usually above 35 or 40 pips. So to me, it's too wide. I'm, I prefer to the stop loss to be below 35 pips, in between 15 to 35 in range. So in that sense, I prefer the 5 minute and then what I do is I simply take uh, these tools I use the Bollinger Bands and Stochastics and look at some price actions for the entry confirmation and right now looks like the market has gone all the way up in the 5 so in this case most likely I wait for the retracement uh, Stochastics uh, has been above 80 and they are exactly in line like uh, overlapping on these two lines person K and D so uh, simply in this case I don't even look at the stochastics I would look at some other confirmations to buy I would just minimize the stochastics like this so that I, I can have more room bigger picture in the candlesticks and all these confirmations so in terms of Bollinger Bands, since the market is going up within the division 1 and 2, this is called Bandwalk, and I take this Bandwalk as one of the entry confirmations. This is one, I can see Bandwalk, and uh, let's see what else I can find. I think that's it right now, looks like there was a pushback here, and the market has gone up. But after this pushback, it has been up for the last 30 minutes or so. So I prefer to wait for the pullback and pushback to buy. But uh, it's worth to monitor in this case. It may pull back and push back in the 5 minute chart within the next 30 minutes or so. So uh, yeah, let's continuously monitor this one. If I see some other confirmations to buy, then uh, in the live, if it happens, then uh, we might be able to trade together here. So let me turn this one to green. And I continuously monitor the chart. So um, and this is what I basically do. Every time I see charts, I open charts, I screen charts. Uh, and also I refer to the strength chart also. And see which one is strong and weak according to the major directions. And if one of them is along with the major direction, then um, I take the Ichimoku in multiple time, time frames and go down to the 5 minute and look for the entry edge like this way. And simply I do this 3 times per day. So uh, yeah, we found USCC AD is good. So we continuously monitor, but in the meantime, let's check some other charts. Let's see which one would be good. To trade it today. Okay, thanks for joining. I see many comments now. Good to see you. You see, uh, Sorosh says, uh, would you enter before breakout in pound USD? Pound USD is uh, 
yeah you can uh in one hour still this is oh looks like one hour now became down you see before just earlier a couple of minutes ago uh kumo was flat kijun sen was flat also but now because of this slight breakout it makes the kijun sen and kumo down which correspond below candles the pound usd is actually became from red to green to go to the five minute for the entry edge so i will um yeah i will go down to the five minute in this case i go down to the five minute chart and see if i can find some entry edge okay so yeah it's about to break the support but in the five i don't really care if it breaks or not uh even if it doesn't break still i still enter the market as long as we can find the confirmations. So since 5 minutes is downtrending in higher time frames, what I do is I'm looking for the seller chance. I never buy from here. Just because there's a support and just because there's a potential double bottom, I won't buy because this is against the major direction. But I used to. I used to buy here because uh, so that it might go up and once it goes up, I thought I could capture from the tail to head of the fish in this way. But I kept doing it and I kept losing by this. So now I don't do it. I always make sure to follow the major flow and trade on that direction. So since this is bearish, I look for the sell chance in the five. And now it's band walking. Bands are expanding nicely. So this looks to be the beginning of the new downtrend. It's uh, it's the indication. Scarcity about the gold cross. So I did wait, wait for this candle close so that I can see more clear dead cross in this case. So I will wait for another two and twenty five seconds to monitor, and then um, and then I can see that there was a reverse end wave happening here, and I want to see if this bounce was valid. Because if this bounce, if this resistance was not valid, then it may break and goes up in this direction. And in order to know if this uh, resistance was valid or not, I use the Fibonacci level. So I will enlarge the picture like this. And um, I take the Fibonacci tool. So I'm only taking this end wave bearish and see if this was valid or not. So I take the Fibonacci tool from top to the bottom of this end wave, and then I can see, okay, so this is exactly at 61.8%. You see, this was exactly on the 61.8%. So that was a good confirmation. So that um, it can go down this way continuously. So I see Fibonacci bounce in this case, and most likely that cross will be confirmed, and then um, band walking is starting to happening. So this pair is good to sell. So yeah, since I have been, I have not been able to trade live for a long time. Let me take a buy, take a sell from here. So if I place a sell right now. Then my stop loss, we have to always think about the stop loss. The stop loss will be up here. Stop loss is going to be above here. And I will take a sell right now. And I will take the stop loss of 30 or 40 pips. And 40 pips is a bit too far. Because I prefer to make it in between 15 to 35. So I take the stop losses here. I take the 30 pips of stop loss and take the sell. And right now, this is no more 30 pips. This is like a 27. But around 30 pips, if you run up, that will be like 30 pips of stop loss I take and take the sell. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I think uh, this is right timing to do live trade. But uh, just to make sure that whenever you trade, 
and this is only for the education educational purposes only so please do at your own risk as a disclaimer so whenever i trade usually i what i do is i take out the mobile i never open mt5 in the pc because sometimes it lags so uh, i pull the mt5 on mobile and pound usd and take the trade okay so pound usd but looks like the market has been active today too oh before that hold on let me see if there's a big news or not just to, just in case okay so yeah today it looks like all the news has been over now so we are safe to trade most likely the market will move depending on the price actions and also technical confirmations so yeah let me take the sell here on usd okay so i executed at 1.2661 was my rate in my broker so 1.26612 it was exactly here okay and i put the stop loss over here and it was 20 28 pips of stop loss i think so this was my trade okay and let's see how it goes okay so i will continue to monitor and see what happens today So um, yeah, in case you've traded together with me, then I always make sure to calculate the risk per trade. You have to make sure that the stop loss risk should be 2% and take the sell here. So let's see if it continuously goes down or pull back. If it goes backwards, then I will talk about when I exactly exit. If it goes down, then I will talk about when I exactly move the stop loss to break even. So let's see. Okay, thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you. So today, this is a live trade right now on pound USD sell. I just took it because I happened to see some confirmations to sell. Okay, good to see you. Thank you for joining. I see many comments now. So, uh, yeah, so let's see. I think, uh, so let me review what I did to trade in this case again, because uh, maybe some members are new here. So let me do exactly what I did step by step. So first, I was seeing that the pound USD daily chart, I see according to Ichimoku line, this is bearish. I see the Kumo down. Kumo means Senko Span B and A are both down. Jun Sen is down also. Tenkan Sen is pointing down. And Chikou Span below candles. So this is bearish in terms of Ichimoku. And you may wonder if this is oversold because we had three days bearishness consecutive. But for me, this is stable bearishness because Kumo is thick enough. If Kumo is very thin, right now then this might be oversold but kumo looks good so it doesn't stop me to sell so that was my daily analysis and then i break it down to the one hour chart and as i went to one hour chart i see the kumo down also same situation uh, kumo senko span b down a down Jijun sen tenkan sen were both down and Chikou span below candles, so this is bearish. We can take a sell. We can, I mean, look for the sell chance. And after I do this, 
I also, this is where I look for the entry edge, what I call the entry edge by the five minute chart. So I even go down to the five and look for the precise entry edge. And in the five minute chart, I don't use Ichimoku. I used to use it before, but not anymore because uh, Ichimoku is a bit lagging in the lower time frames. So I don't use it Ichimoku. But instead, I use the Bollinger Bands and Stochastics. So, um, these Bollinger Bands, I use uh, 20 SMA. So, in the middle is 20 SMA. And uh, uh, Division 1 and 2. I place the, both the Divisions 1 and 2. This is my Bollinger Band setting. And for stochastics, I use 30, 10, 10. Person K30, person D is 10, and slowing is 10. This is my stochastic setting. It's a person K is 30, person D is 10, slowing is 10. And I saw dead cross on stochastics, and also a band walking. Band walk means that the market is going down in the five minute chart. So it tends to go fast if it happens. So I take this also as an entry confirmation. And also I took the Fibonacci bounce. Since this is bearish in the, in the big picture, there was a reverse end wave happening here. So we see end waves many places. Any, anywhere you can find end waves but uh, you have to see which end wave is trustable, which end wave is not trustable. And to know that, I take the Fibonacci. So in the five minute chart, I take the most recent low, oh, sorry, most recent high, and most recent low in five, and see this pullback was valid according to the Fibonacci confirmation. And in this example, I exactly found 61.8%. Bounce. And then afterwards, it broke the support. So I thought this bearish end wave was valid to be continuously downtrending this way. So that was my another confirmation. So like this, whenever I see this five minute chart, I build, build up my confirmations. And so at least I take three confirmations. If there's not three confirmations, then simply I stay away. But sometimes uh, you can find more than three. Maybe it can be four or five. Sometimes you can find six confirmations. And when you find more confirmations, then the chance for the market to go down continuously towards the major direction comes higher. So this is step by step how I enter the trade in the live today. So right now, this is slight profit, but uh, looks like market is still going down. So we have to continuously monitor until I set the break even. So I will just keep the this, uh, this pair for now. And uh, yeah, see if it continuously goes down. Let's see. So in the meantime, let me come back to some comments now. All right, good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining. So let's see, let me check some comments now. Euro USD looks bearish. Yeah, Euro USD is bearish, but uh, we found some better uh, pairs. Like uh, Pound USD is good, and USDC AD was also good. But USDC AD, there are no confirmations, so I prefer to take Pound USD this time. Okay, Daniel Gondales says, uh, K, when you take the trade, think in what current session it's. Uh, I don't really care which session it's going to be when I take a trade. It's okay to be taking the trade in the Asian session, London session, or New York session. Whenever I see trends, then I just take it. Yeah, but usually uh, in Asian session, the market tends to be quiet and it's more uh, volatile on the pound on the uk 
in New York sessions. So in that sense, I prefer to take trades on these two sessions. But if I see trends in Asian session, then I still take it. And I continuously monitor until I set the break even. Because this is also a very important mind as a non-losing trader. You know, as the title says on my YouTube channel, I help you to become a non-losing trader. So this non-losing mindset is a very key to success. And to become non-losing, you have to set the break-even line. Because if you set the break-even line, then uh, you, even if the market reverses backwards, you don't lose. So, so after you set the break-even, that will be break-even or win game. And that's the goal for our trace. Afterwards, you simply leave charts and see if the market goes towards that direction or not. If it reverses, then simply you exit with a break-even. Or but if it goes, then you simply try out the profits along the way. That's it. So to become a non-losing trader, you have to um, you have until you set the break-even is the game you play. At least for me, it's like that. So in this one, um, I have to monitor until I set the break-even because it may reverse backwards to stop loss. So now it's going down, so yeah, the market should go down towards my direction. And then if I see this, for example, reverse end wave below my position, then uh, that's the time for the break even. So to set the break even, simply you move this stop loss slightly below the position, like this, so that even if the market retraces, you don't lose. You still take few pips of the profit, and this is the break-even. And this is very important, actually. So uh, until you set the break-even, is a game you play. However, if you set the break-even too early, then uh, you might you might have too many break-even trades, and you can't make profits in the long run. So you have to know when exactly to set the break-even. Yeah, I used to move the break even too early, like, like in this case, just because the market just goes down, maybe a few pips, and then I set the break even. I used to set the break even, but uh, I I had so many so many break even trades, and oftentimes the market touches the break even, and then goes afterwards, and I lose this potential pips in profit. So, so now. I will make sure that the market goes towards my direction and then move the stop to break even. So right now, this is not a good timing. So I will continuously monitor until the right timing for the break even. Okay, let's see. AP says, uh, what would be your recommendation on starting with 1000 and increasing size because with small lots, you cannot make living from trading. Um, yeah, so if you want to start with 1,000, then uh, you can uh, keep compounding it with, without withdrawing the money. You can keep compounding it and uh, yeah, have enough money in your account to, to, uh, in order for you to help your uh, living by returns. Okay, thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you here. So yeah, a Bollinger Band settings is, uh, I, this is uh, in between is a uh, 20 SMA. I use 20 SMA again. And deviation one and two. So you can see two Bollinger Band indicators on my trading view. And one, I set 20 lengths with a uh, Deviation one, and the other I set the twenty lengths with a deviation two, and I have two bands like this. That's how I set the the the, the Bollinger bands. 
Renanto says, Hi K and everyone, just watching your second channel, your Monday off. I like the view. Stay safe. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I just posted my, uh, my how I spend on Mondays because usually Mondays are my day off because I, I do my teachings on Saturday, Sunday. And Mondays, usually the market's quiet, so I take my day off. And usually I spend my time with reading books and also some uh, visiting some new places, some old places, some of our favorite places, and enjoy the day on, on Mondays. And usually Mondays, there are less people. Weekends, there are so many people, but on Mondays, there are less people, and that's why I prefer to go out on Mondays. Yeah, so that I don't have to wait in a line, usually. All right, thank you for joining everyone. Ruth says, uh, could you repeat please why you don't choose JPY if it looks very strong? Uh, because JPY is today so bullish. JPY currency is so strong today. And this is against the major direction. So um, I don't want to take it today. If JPY is, becomes weak tomorrow or the day after, then I prefer to follow the continuous uptrend in a daily time frame. But if it's going backwards like this, uh, it might be choppy. So I don't want to take it. Yeah, whenever the market starts to change directions, uh, the market becomes tricky. So I recommend you to stay away in that case. So finally, I was able to trade. I was able to show my live trade on the live stream. So <clears throat> let me continuously monitor until I set the break-even line. There is no pullback, so I can't set the break-even yet. So no market continuously goes down or up. It always has to be with the end waves. It's either a uh, bearish in wave or bullish in wave. It's either one of these. So um, if you don't see the reverse in wave, then this is the I wave. It's still in the I wave. And as long as it goes in the I wave, it may retrace. So I'm basically waiting for the retracement, pullback and pushback. Sorry, this is pushback and pullback and breakout to set the break even. And until it happens, I monitor the chart. Okay. Okay. Anron san says, uh, USCCAD ready to open the trade. Okay. USCCAD is also going down. All right. We were actually watching the USCCAD also and look for the buying edge. Oh, but looks like there's a nice pushback. So, uh, yeah, I think this one is also um, good to buy. Prefer to break, prefer to wait for the break. So, wait for the break, resistance, and buy will be good on USCCAD. Oh, so, yeah, for now, we just focus on pound UST. By holding a live trade right now. So once again, I took the sell on 1.2612. Uh, and my stop loss is at 1.26900. I'm taking 29 pips of stop loss in this trade. 20, 28 to 9 pips for the stop loss. And in case you miss my explanation for this entry, uh, you can find find the archive after the live ends so you can always watch later on my entries and also my thought process okay yeah yeah good to see you thank you for joining uh purified crypto says how long do you stay in the trace for uh, it depends on how the market goes afterwards. If it goes range afterwards until I set the break even, then I have to monitor a long time 
if it goes down straight and and then I can see the break even in about 10 minutes to 20 minutes. So and after I set the break even, I simply leave for a couple of hours because I don't lose. So I'm safe in psychology. Okay, uh, Crystal Collins says, uh, do you set your target on the same time frame as entry or a higher time frame? If so, how much higher? Um, I usually don't set the target. I see the potential target by the price theory of Ichimoku or by looking for the recent low, recent high in the weekly, daily time frames. But simply my mindset is I follow the direction as long as it goes. If it just keeps going, then I follow. But if it stops, then I will just exit. So I go with the flow of the market trends in higher time frames. So I usually don't set a target, but instead I monitor the chart three times or four times or five times per day. And once I see the retracement in higher time frames, then that's when I exit. And I exit manually. All my trades, I exit manually. Or sometimes, or you know, I exit manually by pressing the exit button or uh, simply let the market hit the stop and exit there, take profit there. But for this, uh, based on the highs and lows on a pound USD, let's see, the market may drop all the way down to, let's see, to which level. So this is, this was a previous support. So it may go down to the next support, which was here. 1.2482 is an ultimate target. But um, so I say this is my target right now based on the previous low in the daily chart. But um, if it breaks and keeps going down, then there is no reason to exit. I will simply follow the direction. But if it reverses before touching the target, then I will exit here. And if it goes again this way, then I will re-enter the market, sell. And of course, if it touches the target in reverse, then I will exit here too, but I only do so manually. Well, let me continuously monitor by five minutes until I set the break even. Purify says, do you stay in the trade more, for more than a day? Uh, yeah, if it's trending, if it trends more than a day, then I will I hold it. I hold it up to, I would say, two weeks in Forex. In Forex, I think two weeks is like maximum uh, trend duration in average. So, yeah, I usually follow either daily or the four hour for our time frame trends for up to two weeks. All right, Abdi Fata says, uh, what's the best time frame to use Ichimoku? That's the daily time frame. Daily time frame is the best to uh, to trade by by uh, yeah by Ichimoku. Okay, so let me see how much profit I'm running right now in pips. Okay, so now I can see that I'm running more than 30 pips. And uh, most likely, oh, after actually, after I do this live, in about 15 minutes, I will have a meeting. So, uh, so now I will just go ahead and move I stop the break even now. Because if I have more than running 30 pips towards my direction, then most likely the reverse in the wave happens below the position, like this or this. 
So uh, I would say it's safe enough to move it to break even. So let me just go ahead and move it to break even on my mobile. So mobile trading is so handy. So I hardly manage my positions by PC. So I, I set the stop loss at 1.26597 on both positions. Okay, so after I set the stop losses like this, then uh, simply I will leave chart. So actually I'm taking two positions right now. So I take the stop losses on these two positions at the same time. Okay, so I said the stop loss is to break even, and now I leave chart. So this is right now at 7 p.m. in Dubai time, and after I set the break even, what I do is usually if there is no any meetings, and I will just go to kitchen and eat dinner, and uh, spend my time for maybe two hours, three hours, and come back to chart in mobile. I simply take the mobile and see if the market still goes towards my direction. And if it still goes, then uh, I will trail. I start to trail the profits along the way. But if it reverses and hit the break even, then I just take it. And uh, this is basically what I do every time I trade. So. Yeah, okay. Sharon says, uh, uh, how long did you study until become full-time professional trader? I studied for many years. I would say before I become full time, I studied for two years almost. And to become profitable, it took me another two years. So, total, it took me four years to become profitable. It was a long journey, actually. But I'm glad that I made my decision to become full time. Okay, Java says, um, when can we re-enter the pound USD if you want to re-enter? If whenever you re-enter the market, whenever you take the new positions, you have to look for the three confirmations again. If there is no confirmations in the five minute chart, then you have to leave chart. And make sure that you see also a trend towards your direction. Okay, Patrick Kyle says, doesn't USCCAD on the daily time frame looks to be more ranging K? Uh, yeah, so hold on. USCCAD, let me remember. I think I was taking the full hour. Yeah, so daily is flat, but I was taking the full hour uptrend. Four's up, and one hour is up. So I was discussing the five for entry edge. So let me switch back to the and you see five minutes. Uh, Mark Wong says, okay, is there any trading opportunities for your strategy for indices now? Uh, indices right now, I think they are all range. So for me, I prefer to stay away. I prefer to be in Forex because Forex are more active than index right now. Okay. Yeah. You, okay. There are so many comments now. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, John Ong, you welcome your comment. You're welcome. Yeah. Simply, what I can do is just to share what I do on my on my live streams 
So if you can learn something from my live streams, that would be great. Yeah. Augustine says, Kason, how long do you wait? For example, number of pips before you reset the stop loss. So in this case, I took the, since the market is running more than 33 pips, I set the break even. So, yeah, usually 30 to 40 pips if it's running con constantly in I wave, then I will just set the break even. Okay. Yeah, Mark Wong says, is TradingView and your mobile trading platform belong to the same time zone? Uh, no, because uh, my broker is not in UTC time zone, so my platform is in different time zone. The TradingView is UTC, but my broker is not yet UTC, so it's a bit different. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you welcome everyone. Welcome. I hope you learned something new from today's live. Holga says, uh, is this pound USD uh, healthy without any retracement on daily and weekly? Uh, yeah, so it may retrace. It may retrace, but uh, since it's down, I simply follow. And we will never know when it retraces. Simply when it retraces, you exit. And that's it. So again, in the daily time frame, this is bearish in terms of Ichimoku, and that's why I look for the sell chance. If Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, or Chikospan touching, then I will never trade because it's a range in definition of Ichimoku. Okay, Ruth says, what, what broker are you using? I'm using XM. I'm using xmtrading.com is my broker. Okay, as Resta says, uh, hi Kason, is pound JPY ready for bearish? Yeah, let me check. Pound JPY was actually on the Henkabi. Oh yeah, it has been down also for the last three days. So daily chart is ranged, but four hour may be bearish. So let me check the four hour. Oh yeah, 4 hours bearish, so pound JPY is also good. Yeah, pound JPY is also good to sell. Look for the sell. 4 hours down, 1 hour is I think is down also. Yeah, so you can look for the, look for the selling edge in the 5, in the 4 hour. It broke the support, band walking, dead cross. Yeah, looks like this one is also good to sell. Yeah, but I would wait for one more confirmation to sell. To be safer, we want to wait for the pullback and pushback to sell. Uh, yeah, pound JPY, right? Let me check the string chart again. Pound is this one, JPY CR. Okay, so this is so volatile. I think pound JPY is good to go also. Yeah, it's good to go. Most likely, after this doji break, you see the second previous was doji. And once you find this doji break, I think the downtrend can be continuous. There was a outside break. This was outside bar, breakout, band walk, dead cross. Yeah, this one is also good to go. Yeah, but if you trade, please, again, disclaimer. Uh, please do at your own risk. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's see. Let me check some other comments now. We have another five minutes until the end of the live today. So it looks like we have many trending pairs. And see, since we have no news, no big news afterwards, so it's good, it's good to trade.
Okay, Mark Wong says, since TradingView is a UTC while your broker is not, chart candles will appear differently. If TradingView shows three confirmations, can they be applied to your broker trade? Yeah, they look the same. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference in time zone difference. The candlesticks look the same on any time zone. But if the broker is different, then that makes the candlestick look different. So in trading view, I'm using the broker FXCM to get the chart. But uh, my broker XM may offer some different candlesticks. But basically, they are the same. If there's a big difference, then you have to consider. But uh, as far as I take trades for the last couple of years, I see some minor differences, but not so much big impact. So I'm okay to use TradingView and execute by mobile. Okay. Yeah. John Ong says, uh, do you look at the daily range for the different pairs so that to be alert to take profit and exit? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't really look at the daily range. Yeah. I simply follow the direction and I exit based on the Ichimoku confirmations. Okay. Khalid says, uh, what is the best way to study price action along with the Ichimoku? Uh, price action, um, uh, price action with the Ichimoku works so well. So, price action knowledge I think is a must to learn. Um, you can actually find many resources on YouTube. If you can come to my YouTube channel also and search ForexK price action. And I have talked a lot about the price actions previously on the videos and lives. So you can uh, watch them and gain knowledge. But uh, one thing is you don't have to know all these names. Like there are so many names in the world. Like, uh, like uh, yeah, Pinbar or, uh, you know, Doji or like a Morning Star, Shooting Star or uh, yeah, like a Graveyard or a uh, Hanging Man. You know, all these names. You just, you just forget about these names. Yeah, only get this basic concept. Uh, yeah, names are not really important when it comes to price action. And also know that all the markets are in a wave, in the end wave as a whole. So this is now on the reverse end wave. It's reverse end wave. So it's either bullish end wave or bearish in the wave. That's it on any markets. With this aspect, you can see charts and uh, study the price actions. Okay. Oh, Mahardika says, I think it's time to try out the profit level. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I see. So, when I start to trail, is when I start to see the reverse in the wave. But in five, I don't see any reverse in the wave. This is the I wave, so I don't move it yet. I just keep it at the break even still. But in the future, if I start to see reverse in the wave like this, then I will move the stop to here. And if I see the next reverse in the wave, then I will move this stop to here. In this way, I trail, and simply when the market reverses, I will take profit here in the five. This is so simple, but very powerful. Yeah, and I do this all all time. Whenever I trail, exit, I always do this. Yeah, Macron, you're welcome. Yeah, sometimes there are some minor differences, so yeah, be careful. Michael says, uh, do trading view have any direct link with a broker from the chart? Uh, yeah, you can you can go to uh, I think it was in the trading panel. Yeah, if you can click on the trading panel, 
and enlarge, maximize the panel on here. If you click this one, then you can find a list of the brokers that you can connect to the trading view. But unfortunately, X XM is not here. And that's why I still use MT5 to trade. So, yeah, and for me, it's easier to manage two positions on MT5 than trading view. So that's why for, for me, trading view is to analyze, but uh, not to trade. Okay, so I guess uh, I will end the live for now. So um, thank you for watching until the end. I wish uh, you great success in your trading journey. It looks like markets are active still. So uh, you can continuously monitor. Looks like pound JPY looks bearish also. So, uh, But make sure that you follow the major direction. And never go against the major direction, major flow. Always, always go with the flow and you can get to the destination with less power. If you go against the wind, then you have to have power to, to keep pushing. But uh, if the wind is from your back, then uh, you can just go with the flow without, you know, uh, without big power, you can just get there. So that's my concept. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. So until then, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. All right, bye for now. Matane. Thank you.